the VDC meeting of the Security Council is going to order. The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Great Lakes region. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with the Rule 37 of the Council Provisional Rule of Procedures, I invite the representatives of Democratic Republic of the Congo to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. In accordance with the Rule 39 of the Council Provisional Rule of Procedures, I invite the following briefers to participate in this meeting. Mr. Huang Xie, Special Envoy of the Secretary General for the Great Lakes Region, and His Excellency Mr. Mohammed Fatih Ahmad Idris, Chair of the Peace Meeting Commission and Permanent Representative of Egypt. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of the item two of the agenda. I wish to draw the attention of the council members to document S-2021-306, the report of the Secretary General on the implementation of the Peace, Security, and Cooperation Framework for the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the region. I now give the floor to Mr. Wang Xie. Mr. Xie, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, I would like to thank you first for the opportunity that I have to present the most recent report of the Secretary General on the implementation of the Peace, Security and Cooperation Framework for the Democratic Republic of Congo and the region. Allow me at the outset also to reiterate my most sincere condolences to the people and government of the United Republic of Tanzania. Following the death of President John Pombe Magufuli, on the 17th of March last. I would also like to extend my warm congratulations and wishes for success to President Hassan uh, as he takes over leadership of the country. President, it has been a year since the first case of COVID-19 was recorded in the region. Since then, almost two million cases have been recorded around 13 signatory countries to the uh, PSC framework, more than 60,000 lives have been lost. Here I wish to pay tribute also to all of those people who've died and express my solidarity towards those who are still suffering the terrible consequences of the pandemic, including women who are rather disproportionately affected by this. When faced with this difficult situation, the government and the people in the region continue to demonstrate resilience and determination. I would like to express to them my sympathy and admiration. Allow me also to congratulate the governments of the region who have established programs for to mitigate the negative effects of the pandemic. And also, as well as I'd like to congratulate those who, thanks to the COVAX mechanism, have launched vaccination campaigns. These vaccination campaigns have so far allowed for um, just over a million doses to be administered in the region. I invite the distinguished members of this council to continue their mobilisation in order to foster more equitable and affordable access to the vaccine including in areas affected by armed conflict, as recommended by Resolution 2565 that the Council adopted on the 26th of February last. Here I wish to also reiterate my appeal to the international community for continued support to the countries in the region in their fight against the pandemic. President, 
Despite this particularly difficult context, the leaders in the region have continued their commitment to the Addis Ababa framework, as is demonstrated by several political, security, judicial and economic initiatives underway. Allow me to highlight some of them. On the politi political and security front, President Shishakedi is continuing his efforts alongside his counterparts around the region, particularly Presidents Kagame, Museveni and Nishadimye, to seek solutions, lasting solutions to the issue of armed groups. These armed groups continue to wreak havoc in the east of the DRC. I wish to congratulate them on these efforts and reiterate my commitment to support the heads of state so that the region can tackle this scourge once and for all with the support of MONUSCO and in close collaboration also with other guarantor institutions of the framework. These are the African Union, uh, the International Conference on the Great Lakes, IGCLR, and the SADC. We will all manage to achieve, we only manage to achieve such an ambitious objective if, beyond ongoing military actions, we also work to implement non military instruments with part of a global and coordinated approach which was record which was called for by the heads of state of the region during their summit held on the 20th of November. In this connection I'm happy to announce that the guarantors of the framework are supporting oper oper operationalization of the contact and coordination group which brings together civilian and military experts of countries in the region and the first meeting of this group uh, should be held in the weeks to come so that they can go flesh out the package of non-military measures and as well as a potential implementation program. Still within the framework of strengthening regional political cooperation, I would also like to pay tribute to President Lorenzo from, of Angola, who, before he took office as the chair of the ICGLR in November last, may already committed alongside his counterpart in the DRC, to ensure better relations between Rwanda and Uganda as part of the quadripartite process. During my last visit to the region, the main players assured me, or they all assured me that they are ready uh, to remain committed to this process. Given this political will, I encourage Presidents Lorenzo and Shishakedi to pursue their efforts so that this process succeeds and I also reiterate my availability and readiness to accompany them wherever necessary. Equally, I wish to encourage Burundi and Rwanda in their efforts to improve their relations. In recent months, we have seen a series of encouraging gestures which demonstrate a common will of those two countries to move forward. I'm, I have in mind meetings between the Ministers of Foreign Affairs, as well as consultations between security services on securing the border area, as well as the return of Burundian refugees. All of this is very promising, and I plan on continuing to play my part, so of course, given with the, the consent of the authorities, so that we can assist these two brotherly countries to consolidate what they've achieved so far and overcome all the obstacles in the way of a definitive normalization and unreserved normalization of their relations. Present, despite this progress, there still are challenges in the region, and these have been exacerbated by COVID-19. Amongst the challenges that we're very aware of, I remain particularly concerned by the level of violence, which continues to affect the security of those living there, particularly women and young people. And they are hindering the community's ability to develop violence that is, continue, that is continually perpetrated by armed groups is a source of great concern. We must put a stop to it, not only through the strong measures that are underway, but also through the use of the justice system. 
Here I wish to welcome the various exemplary verdicts that were adopted in recent months against the heads of armed groups. This was done both by national courts in the DRC and by the International Criminal Court. Some countries in the region have unfortunately experienced elections that were tarnished by violence and that led to the loss of life. While it is difficult to put an end to the activities of armed groups, I am, however, convinced that it is not impossible to dream of a, region, a Great Lakes region free from the horrors of electoral violence, as long as the means are available to do so. This will be done particularly by stepping up prevention work. Thus, I do call on the goodwill of all uh, to promote a safe environment that is in a, that can lead to the holding of inclusive, free and transparent elections, fully complying with the African Charter for Democracy Elections and Governance. Distinguished members of the Council, the region seems to be resolutely committed and on, on the right... On th on the right track to attack these and tackle these security, political, economic challenges that are before it. However, it is vital to have the tireless support of the international community. And this is precisely one of the issues and the main objectives of the United Nations strategy for peace consolidation, conflict prevention and conflict resolution in the Great Lakes region. This was drawn up by my office upon request from the Secretary General and it was submitted to the Security Council on the 3rd of December last. Indeed, the strategy plans on leveraging the best of the various UN entities working in the region to better assist people and countries in their quest for peace, stability and sustainable development. We will do this with your support and with the cooperation of signatories to the framework, we're always bearing in mind the requirements of the Humanitarian Development Peace Nexus. Along the same vein, I wish I will con continue my engagement with countries and organisations in the region my colleagues who are special representatives in the region, as well as resident coordinators and experts and organisations from civil society in order to draw up a action plan for the strategy. The aim will thus be to identify together priorities, duly take into account not only progress that is underway and remaining challenges, but also the comparative advantages of each and particularly the needs of countries in the region. President, in the weeks to come, in addition to drawing up the ac an action plan to, for a coordinated implementation of our collective strategy, my country will, or my, my office will also focus on some priorities which I wish to share with you before I conclude. First of all, I will pursue, continue in the good offices of the Secretary General to support efforts for rapprochement and political dialogue which are already underway in the region, strengthened by the fruitful uh, commitments that I've heard with authorities from countries in the region, and committed, as committed as ever to this pa my patient and discreet approach, I will resume consultations as, the, as long as the pandemic situation will allow. Then we, alongside the guarantors of the framework and with the support of MONUSCO, we will provide all necessary support for the operationalization of the contact and coordination group on non-military measures. Additionally, we're also going to continue political advocacy on a high level and mobilize the necessary resources so that we can meet the goals that we have set. We will not be able to solve the issue of armed groups once and for all if we do not tackle, as we have said so often, the root causes of instability in the region, and in particularly the illegal exploitation of natural resources. As where as we are of the benefit that these 
represent for development and prosperity in the DRC and in other countries in the region, we must therefore, as our third immediate priority, think about an innovative approach in how we fight the exploitation and the illicit trade in natural resources. To this end, my office is planning on organising in collaboration with the ICGLR and the German International Cooperation and Development Agency, GIZ, a regional workshop on a regional high level workshop which would aim to draw up a regional three year action plan which is focused on increased synergies uh, in terms of interventions between all players and partners so that we can ensure transparent management of the natural resources around the region. So these four priorities will occupy our work in the months to come. However, it does go without saying that in line with the uh, aims of the regional strategy, my office will remain fully mobilised on other equally urgent questions. These include support efforts for relief of countries in the region, promotion of human rights and the fight against impunity, uh, empowerment of women's organisations, including the Advisory Council of Women, Peace and Security, as well as those for youth. Um, and these all work towards the objectives of the Peace and Security and Cooperation Framework. President, in conclusion, I wish to express my profound gratitude to all members of the Security Council, as well as other states, and also to the Peace Building Commission. They have continued to provide financial and technical support to my office so that my, I can implement, a, implement my mandate and since I took, this, I took up this role in 2019. I know that I'll be able to count on you as we pursue our shared objective, ensuring a Great Lakes region that is peaceful, stable and prosperous. I thank you very much. I thank Mr. Sear for his briefing. And I now give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Mohammed Fatih Ahmed.